What is your name? John Van Buskirk. Okay, what have you brought for us today? I brought a lot of pictures of Sealands Grove and Snyder County from the turn of the century on through the 50s. Okay, do you want to show us some of them for the camera? I have uh, pictures of Schmoke and Dam, a small town. It used to be called Keensville. And uh, this is tore down now. It's gone. It was on the old, what we call the old trail and Schmoke and Dam. Uh, right below the old bridge, there was a place they'd swim in the river, and they referred to it as Sandy Beach years ago. Uh, here's the famed traffic circle in Schmoke and Dam. Uh, the dam that was washed out in 1904 by high water. It's currently where the, where the new dam is now, real close to that. Uh, trains in Seelands Grove. Uh, a local hot dog place that was open 24 hours a day. I sp spent many of many a night in there. It was open 24 oh. hours, and everybody would meet there after whatever. Yeah. Okay. You just, loves these <laughs> yeah, it's open. This is a picture of man in the snow and smoking dam on the old trail. I have, I have no idea what uh, I have no idea what year that is, uh, but it's it's very old. Here's what used to be Ted's Landing. It, it closed not long ago, and before it was Ted's Landing, it was Blue Hill Restaurant. Mm -hmm. And uh, I managed to find somebody that even knew who was in the picture, and they tell who was in the picture. Skeeters is right above this on the hill, if you're familiar where, where Skeeters is. Well, this is a restaurant right below there, and here it is in the famed traffic circle in Schmoke and Dam. Uh, just more river pictures. Another scene of the Methodist Church in Schmoke and Dam, and here's a motorcycle with a sidecar and whether the garage there and the old trail in would be here, and this is when it was dirt. And uh, the Ira Fizz home, very important politician, lived right next to the church. And the famed traffic circle in Schmoke and Dam, that house was in the center. And here we have, it says Mary Gogler Trexler, and they lived in this right when you come across excuse me when you come across the bridge there was a great big home in the center and this is where she lived and i think it's this lady here and uh, don't they look like a stately bunch not they don't look like they'd be much fun <laughs> but i would imagine that would be very hot in the summer look look buttoned right up to the next high shoes mm -hmm. long dresses but uh, look at that. i think that would represent some money i i can't picture everybody dressing like that back I don't know. What do you, what do you think your wood deck is? Oh, oh, in the 20s. Oh, okay. And uh, this is Schmokin' Dam School. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> this would be somewhere where Hosses was. Now, they did tear a school down when they put Hosses Steakhouse up, but there was a little one-room schoolhouse near, near Hosses. Okay. But I can't find anybody that knows anybody in that photo and whether they're alive yet or not. Do you just like, go around asking people if they... I love local history and then that I have grown up in Schmoke and Dam. Uh, so I, I find pictures at flea markets or anybody or sales or anybody that has the same interest. If I have something, I, I print it for them and maybe they'll give me what they have. And uh, some of my close friends always know that I like this. So they say, hey, Grandma had this. Do you want a picture of this or anything? And I say, yes. I just remember also like newspaper clippings. Do you clip them? Oh, the ever yeah. I'm I'm constantly cutting things out of the paper, and this was where this is that school where the that we saw previously where the fellows were the teacher and the students, and uh, mm -hmm. the Lutheran Church would have been here. Is it mostly photographs that you uh, collect? <coughs> mostly photographs, but uh, you want some water? I'm a no. I'm good. I'm a history buff. Just just about anything. Uh, here's an interesting one. If you cross the bridge to go to Sunbury, just as you get on the bridge, on the, on the downward side, there's a great big, I don't know if it's elm, I'm not sure what it is, but there's a huge tree, it's still there today, and there's a chain from the canal days, which would be pre-Civil War, and this chain we discovered as a little, I discovered it as a little boy, and I was down there recently to make sure the tree was still standing and that chain comes out of it and it's pinned into that tree and this is a huge huge tree and we think this is from I was told by people that I respect their opinion they said that's from the canal when they chain their boats up 
or whatever. That's that. If that could talk, I mean, pre pre Civil War and uh, this huge tree, and that for whatever reason they pinned it and uh, to fasten something to it. Oh, and that cool. huge tree. And these are pictures of the flood from 1972 in Schmokin Dam. Here's Blue Hill. This would be about where the Nori Boat Club is. And if you go up 11 from where Ted's Landing is, like you're gonna go up Route 11 to cross the bridge into Nori, you'll see there's a little hump there yet. And uh, there used to be a trailer there that people lived, but in this photo, there's a little building there. And when they would bring the canal boats down along the side of the river, they used that to, to move the mules back and forth. And this is steam powered. So this, this is a very early picture. I'm surprised it's that clear. Uh, another famous place in Schmokin Dam. This would have been uh, just south of Haas' Steakhouse on the southbound side. I ate many hot dogs there. They had 12-inch hot dogs and frosted root beer. And in the 50s, this was a real popular drive-in to go to get. It was like a Dairy Queen or a Tasty Freeze in its day. And uh, it was a restaurant, but they also had a place out front you could stand at the window. And this is a different 24-hour hot dog place. What's that? This, this, this is a different place than the 24 Oh, yeah, this is a different place. In fact, this was run by a, a minister. And uh, so he, yeah, he was closed on Sunday. <laughs> and it was closed in the evening. And that car is about a 1950. And uh, I don't know if I'd look there with a magnifying glass if it would tell the prices. But you'd get 12, we were kids, and you get a 12-inch hot dog and a big mug of frosted root beer where we thought we were hot. And Schmokin Dam years ago, before it was Schmokin Dam, was Keensville. And Schmokin Dam was named, Keens, it was Keensville, then it became Schmokin Dam, because Sunbury used to be Schmokin, and then Sunbury's name was changed from Schmokin to Sunbury, and there was a dam there, so it was the dam at Schmokin. So the other, the west side of the river became Schmokin Dam. Let's see something good here. It was a little park. Everybody, it closed in 1971. Rolling Green it was called the People's Playground. And this was up near where the Susquehanna Valley Country Club. And here's an aerial view. And these cars are from the late 30s. And here's, you could go out on a little, you could rent canoes or they had a little like ferry boat would take you around. There's a Ferris wheel. And the park was down in here. You can't see much of the park from this, but it was a real big attraction. And, uh, Another area of view that this is from a different angle. There's a swimming pool, and there's the thing. And around here, it's all now it's all developed. And here is the here is the park. The people they had a they had a grandstand, and they had famous uh, actually famous people would come there and, and perform on a Sunday afternoon in different concerts. And uh, this and either wasn't well attended or it was before <laughs> before it got started. And then they had uh, all kind of skeet ball and tilt a whirl and dodgems and merry go rounds and uh, everything. And the newest car I can see in here is a '65. So I would imagine this is and then the pegger pants and everything. I imagine this was '66. These were taken if I had a guess. And I have no idea who these people are. They were on the roll of film. <clears throat> There's a colored picture of the. Uh, there's a swimming pool and there's the lake. It was huge. But uh, just pictures of Seals Grove and old truck. Here's Susquehanna University, but I don't know where it was taken. Maybe you girls would look at the bicycles. Everybody has it all decorated from the fourth or something, and they're so proud of their bicycles. Because at that time, uh, bikes were used as a transportation, not as like a recreation vehicle or something. I mean, there was a lot of men. That's how they got to work. I mean, that's what they had. A bicycle. They'd be worth a lot of money today. <laughs> yeah. And Blue Hill used to be the famous Shiklini Hotel that burnt down in 1898, and this bridge burnt down in 1923. It was a wooden span. This, if you'd go from Ted's Landing up 11, like you're going to go to Nori, where the bridge is now, it used to be a covered bridge, and right up there would be Shiklini Hotel. This is downtown. This is downtown Seals Grove. Now the other girl recognized this right across from the Gov. <clears throat> if you girls ever visited the Gov, when you'd be at the front, if you'd look right across the street, Jim would know. And here's a, a, someplace the campus up here.
but now this would be an early picture. I don't know how much that changed that you'd be able to uh, tell where it was at. <clears throat> and another one of Seal and Scrub right across from the Gov. Then uh, canal boats. And here's Seal and Grove. In this picture, these are Union veterans that participated in the uh, the Civil War, and they were proud, probably the 4th of July, and they marched through town, and here's the, all the battles they had fought in Gettysburg, all the famous battles, and these are some of surviving Union veterans marching, yeah, probably in the 4th of July parade or Memorial Day. Little Norway was a famous uh, skating place. If you've ever been down in the Isle of Kew, right when you cross the, the bridge, we call them singing bridges, the ones when you drive across them with a car, that your tires whistle. Uh, on the right hand side there was a skating place in the summer. In the winter they'd flood it and plow it and it was they'd play music and have lights on at night and you could go there and skate during the 50s. It was a wonderful place and it was called Little Norway. I have a I have a better picture of Little Norway in here. Is it always snowy like that? Pardon me? Is it always snowy like that? It was back then. It just seemed that it would it would snow in late November and we had more more snows. This is a drive. This is a drive-in that was up along the highway. This is up close to where the new uh, Walmart is on the strip. There was a drive-in, the New Way Drive-in, and, and uh, they had all the latest snows. This is Fremont, which is now Mount Pleasant Mills, a little town west of here. And those fellows look like they're taking a trip or something. They're so proud. There they are in their bicycles. And, uh, that would be, judging by the bikes and, and the uh, attire, I'd say that's about 1920, somewhere in there. There's, there used to be a bridge. When you go over to the Isle of Q, somebody had made a bridge, and it was a footbridge, and it was a swinging bridge. It was like a rope bridge. It was like a bridge, if you ever saw Indiana Jones, mm -hmm. when he'd be on that. There was one of those, and that, Bob remembers it in Jim, and it was... It would when I was young. It still would have been up, but yet I I can never remember it myself. I cannot picture it. But Bob's been on it many a times. Which way are we going here? Hang on. Where's that picture? Of little Norway. Freebird Band. Uh, they look like a bunch of wild characters. It says Freebird Silver Band. But yet the fellas are all holding rifles. So I don't <laughs> I don't know. I'd love to find somebody that could tell me. There's Little Norway. And you would park out here and go in and either rent your skates or put your shoes and put your skates on. Then you would come down a slide and then this, after they'd plow the snow off of it and this was Little Norway and then they had lights on it and would play music. I skated there when I was in seventh or eighth grade and uh, that was a big deal to meet your girlfriend there or take your girlfriend there. In my case, it was meeting her because I didn't drive when I was in seventh grade, but to go skating on Little Norway. And uh, that was... That was famous in the area. So many people knew Little Norway. Something else. Is there anything in here that would be interesting? All kind of. Uh, and here's pic here's pictures of. Here they are in Little, Little Norway down here. Here's people. Here he has it on his truck advertising it. And they'd be down here skating. And it was. Uh, the whole family would go. And I have tons and tons of these pictures. And I'm always searching for more and people to tell me that older than me or that know something that'll say, oh, I know that person or I can do this or something because we live in such an interesting area. That's true. So what got you interested in collecting all of these pictures? Well, being from the area, I grew up in Smokin' Dam. I live in Lewisburg now. But just being from the area, uh, I don't know, just anything old and quaint. And, and to me, I like to look backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and just just find it very interesting. I, I don't really know. But uh, I collect all local pictures, anything local. It's such a good hobby to have to like preserve history. Mm -hmm. It really tells a story. So how did you hear about the history of Harvard today? I read this in the Daily Item. I read this in the Daily Item two different times. In fact, I have the one clipping out there I, br I brought along. And... Uh, Pardon me? It's going to be part of your history thing. So oh. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's amazing 
they made a few books in the area. The Daily Item made a book and different things, and it was local pictures. And they would tell me after the book came out and it was printed, later they talked to people that said, oh, I didn't know you wanted old pictures. I could come up with some. And it's amazing what's in attics and closets or anything that people have that they don't think anybody else would be interested in. But yet, to me and different other people, it's a treasure trove. It was just like uh, somebody that, say, graduated from here in the 50s, and they remembered little Norway, <coughs> pardon me, and they'd come back and say, do you have anything? Or did, I'm not dreaming this up, but there was a place we used to skate, but I can't think of the name of it. Well, if this is in the archives now or something, they can say, yes, yes, that's where I met my future wife, or that's where we had our youth in the winter. So it's it's wonderful. I was so glad that I read that you guys are doing this. Yeah. I'm glad to help with any of my pictures. <laughs> <laughs>